Alina Haba's argument hinges on the idea that those in power often become targets of extortion, especially in highly litigious societies. You know, when sure. you talk about things like morals, people will say, this is a case about a former president, somebody who was running for president, paying off a porn star who alleges that she had a relationship with him. I mean, that sparks a whole other conversation about morality, who's running the country. Obviously, voters in 2016, it was not a problem, or they factored in what they knew about the Access Hollywood tape and other things, and they were comfortable sending President Trump to the White House. Yeah. They've had four years to think about the way he performed, now four years of President Biden. Um, but some of them will always now have this vision with President Trump that these kinds of dramas and things will be just part of his package, part of what comes with him as yeah. president. It's called extortion. Extortion is something that happens with people when they are powerful, when they are strong voiced and when people listen to them. It is a natural consequence of being a very effective human being in this unfortunate culture that we have. It is litigious. That is what America has become. And Joe Biden, unfortunately, can't really do anything in office. So he's got to use the same means as somebody who's just trying to have a quick slip and fall and make money. And that is frankly what we're seeing right now. This is exactly a Biden show because he's got to distract the American people. Listen, but the Biden administration's not responsible for this trial. How can you say the Biden administration's not responsible it's a state, for this trial? It's a, it's a state trial. It's it's Alvin Bragg. Whether you think there's a political motive for him, it's not connected to the DOJ. I mean, Shannon, the, the feds passed on these election charges. Shannon, you should look at how many uh, logs they have of state officials, Letitia James, Fannie Willis, visiting the White House and then tell me that this is not a Biden trial. I don't feds care. pass on this case is... Is the point I'm You're making. Right. The feds passed on this case. Also, D.A. Uh, Cy Vance passed on this case. And Years frankly, ago, and then it came Brad, back. And Brad passed on this case. You know when it came back? When he decided to run for office. Mm -hmm. So tell me how that's not a, a, an indication that Joe Biden, who just sent his campaign down here with Robert De Niro yesterday, isn't a part of this. Frankly, any question that we had of that was squashed yesterday. And if you have even more concerns about whether he's involved in this, look at the fact that he is publicizing, literally publicizing for tonight to have a speech if a verdict comes out. That's a sad state of affairs. Meanwhile, our country is falling apart. He's got bigger fish to fry. Do not think, though, that that any president would want to would want to weigh in on something that's this historic. A former president, his predecessor, whatever the verdict or decision may be. I would. I wish that Biden had that same sentiment about the border, fentanyl, and our children being mutilated. I would prefer that he would focus on the real things instead of trying to attack his political opponent, who he just cannot beat. The themes of power and its consequences are evident. Individuals like former President Trump who wield significant influence and have a singular voice, naturally attract adversaries seeking to exploit their power for personal gain. This highlights the inherent struggles and conflicts tied to power and existence. The current administration, according to Haba, uses legal maneuvers to distract the public from its shortcomings. This is seen as a deliberate act of malice, where flaws are projected onto others to avoid accountability. It stands as a conservative critique of governmental overreach and manipulation. Donald Trump's moral controversies and the public's response to them touch on themes of authenticity and self-deception. This situation represents a broader social trend where voters overlook Trump's moral flaws, prioritizing efficiency and power over traditional moral values. It signifies a crisis in modern society where people grapple with finding meaning and authenticity amidst conflicting values. The host criticizes the differing responsibilities of state and federal governments during the trial, pointing out the complexity and fragmentation of modern legal and political systems. This disconnection and lack of accountability foster public confusion and distrust. The historical significance of the trial and public perceptions of presidential candidates delve into how historical events shape the identities of individuals and groups, influencing how leaders are perceived and judged. People are struggling to find meaning and stability in a rapidly changing political landscape where the constant drama surrounding Donald Trump is a focal point. This likely criticizes a broader culture that prioritizes litigation and sensationalism over substantive issues. It reflects a societal void where superficial conflicts overshadow deeper threats like border security, drug epidemics, and child welfare. Concerns about cultural decline and the erosion of true values are evident. 